Arsenal are going into the first North London derby of the season. And with injuries to many of our players, including our star man and the captain, Martin Odegaard, three points is still the absolute necessity in this game. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys next. And so what do you think about that first half, though, even though it was a tricky start? Yeah, I mean, it was... So yes, people, like I said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you like anything Arsenal related. All of that will be on this channel as I have Arsenal fan interviews, have player comparisons, player debates, player analysis, and all of that on this channel. As well as lives. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I started going live on this channel more often and you could probably catch me going live more consistently on Mondays and Wednesdays. So if you like live content and you want to get more interactive with me, I'll be going live on Mondays and Wednesdays from now on. So don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to notification bell so you never miss an upload and you never miss a live stream. Without further ado, let's get straight into the match preview for the North London Dark. Firstly, let's talk about the head-to-head -head record between these two teams over the last six games. Arsenal come into this tie with four wins, one draw and a loss. Last season, we picked up a draw at home at the Emirates and we won 3-2 at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. To be honest, a win that we were 3-0 up at halftime and yes, we conceded two goals in the second half, two mistakes, whether it be a penalty or an error on um, David Raya's part. But we were cruising in that game for long, long periods of time. And I think that game plan is similar to what we'll see on Sunday. Let's talk about the form going into this game. Arsenal come off the back of a draw to Brighton that saw us pick up a red card. We should have had another three points when Declan Rice was, to me, unfairly sent off due to him kicking the ball or getting in front of the ball, stopping it from um, being played, giving him a second yellow card, ultimately giving him a red and causing him to miss the North London derby. But Spurs come into this game with four points for available nine. Or book you could throw out the window when it comes to North London derby because sometimes it doesn't matter how the teams play before going into it. You always see the teams trying to get the best of each other and trying to win. And when you have a manager like Ange Postacoglu and Mikel Arteta, they're both going to be coming gun hole to see what they can do to get three points. Spurs have created a lot of chances in their opening few games. Again, just against Newcastle, the game that they lost 2-1, they created 20 chances. 20 shots, I should say. They had 20 shots against Newcastle and only scored one goal, which was an own goal. So it goes to show you, and potentially with them missing the two number nines in Richarlison, in um, Dominic Solanke being out and Mickey van der Ven who's a big big part to how they want to play in terms of having that high line I think it's a game plan for Arsenal three points against Tottenham at their away ground which will be the third time in three straight seasons that we've managed to pick up points all three points I should say on their home ground but let's talk about the significant misses and absentees that we have for this game and I'm sure all of you are familiar with them Yes, like I talked about, Martin Odegaard will miss this game, confirmed by Mikel Arteta today. Doesn't look like Martin Odegaard will play. Same thing with Mikel Moreno. We also confirmed that he'll be out for like two months. And it's looking like um, Ricardo Calafiori might be back, but he looks to be a dope for the game. And everybody knows that Declan Rice is um, missing through suspension. However, we did get good news on press conference and seeing that Gabriel Jesus is fit and available to play the game as he's been training all week with the team. Gabriel Jesus will play his first game of the season um, for Mikel Arteta potentially. And if you ask me what I would do, I would give Gabriel get Jesus that game time from the start. He's been training all week. He had a good preseason. Yes, he had a freak injury. I know he went back down with, a, with another groin injury or a knee injury, whatever it was. And, and I think it was a bit of precaution from Mikel Arteta and um, the staff. But I think, I know you want to ease him in because he has a history of injuries. But I think, when you look at the personnel available to us, I think Gabriel Jesus would be the guy I'd go from the start, even though he's had a history of niggling injuries. But like I said, let's go straight into the predicted 11. And that is right here. So the 11 you see, I have Dabby Raya in gold, who I think was who won not only Premier League save of the month, but for me was our player of the month. Um, even though I went to Bukayo Saka, who I also think is very, very deserving of the award. I thought Dabby Raya had an amazing month with saves in every single game to keep us in the game and ultimately the reason why we're not sitting here with a loss in the loss column but Davareo starts and goal with a similar bat line that played in front of him I'll, I'll go white at right back Gabriel and Saliba and the center backs and I'll go Yuri and Timber at left back I said Yuri and Timber because like I said Mikel Arteta not sure if um Calafiori will be fit for the North London Derby he did pick up an injury on international duty but it doesn't seem to be that significant. So we're waiting and seeing what it, what comes of that injury um, news. 
I'm gonna wait possibly as late as game day to see what happens on Sunday. But I'd go with Timber just to be safe. Timber looked really good against Villa. I thought he looked really good um, against Brighton. He didn't play bad. So I'd bring him back in from the start. I think he keeps his place. Didn't do anything to lose it. So I'd go with the same back five we had before. And now going into midfield, we see the most significant changes. Now I'm sure everyone would have liked to see Odegaard, uh, Rice, and Moreno by this point. The midfield three, I think all of us want to see play together. But... It looks like we're going to have to wait as all of those players will miss this game. But what do we do going into this game? I'd go Partey and Jorginho as a double pivot. I think that gives us not only the safest option, but the most reliable option in that midfield. We have legs that can get around and help um, Jorginho with Thomas Partey, who's, to be honest, surprised me and shown that he's willing to get around the pitch and willing to put in that extra hard work. As well as Jorginho and Partey, who are really, really good at keeping the ball. And I think playing against a team like Spurs, who like to win the ball high up in good areas, who are going to look to attack us in that way. I think we have players like Jorginho and Partey who are confident at receiving the ball through the lines and good at playing it off into our forward players and to our, our wing backs. I think it would be really, really good to have both of them in there to solidify in front of our defense. And in front of him in the number 10 position, I'd potentially go with Kai Havertz. Now, I know there's been a lot of talk about Enwaneri, and even in the press conference, Enwaneri was mentioned to Mikel Arteta with Mikel Arteta responding and saying, The kids have given us a lot of hope and have shown we can count on them. And if we need to, we will do it. Now, we've seen Enwaneri play games under Mikel Arteta already, being the youngest ever Premier League player at only 15 years old. Even games last season, he got minutes. I remember West Ham, he got minutes last season away. He played in preseason. He's been playing on, um, with the first team all season long. He's been named on the bench a few times, I think, for every single game, potentially. And I think it might be his time, but not from the start. And it's not, and it's not saying, and I'm not saying that he's not good enough from the start or that Mikel Arteta doesn't trust him from the start. I just think it's a bit of a baptism of fire. And I'm not saying that you wouldn't stand the test in it, but I'm thinking Mikel Arteta in a in a game that's so crucial to the title race, a game that's so crucial to Arsenal fans and Arsenal as a football club, it's a game that you want to win at all costs. And you don't want anything going your way. And I know Enwaneri is a really good player. He's good at dribbling, good at retaining the ball. But at the same time, do you want to throw a 17-year-old in the deep end in such a crucial position? And also too, if he's going to replace Martin Odegaard, look at the defensive responsibility of Martin Odegaard, who leads our press along with Kai Havertz. I think that's probably a bit too much of running to ask of the youngster just yet but i think he will grow and will develop into that role for Mikel Arteta. but i just don't think he's there right now and for this game i think he will go with kai Havertz in the midfield and i think the front three will be bakayo saka on the right as you can see here go with martinelli off the left now i know you're talking about trossard and martinelli trossard only played one game trossard only played one game no listen i i do agree trossard only played one game from the start listen i think trossard will sit on the bench would i want trossard to start i wouldn't mind seeing trossard or martinelli but Everyone's arguing me with the pace. I understand the pace. I do understand that pace argument. And I do think it could be something that potentially Mikel Arteta will go with. So I think Mikel Arteta will go with Martinelli off of the left. Just to see that he's been looking really, really sharp in international break. Him and Raheem Sterling. So everyone's been talking about Raheem Sterling starting, going from the start. But I don't think Raheem Sterling will start. I think either Trossard, Sterling um, would be good options off the bench. And Gabby Jesus back in the team. I think that's a big, big, big big thing for Gabi Jesus if he could come in from the start perform well for us and potentially get a goal for himself and really kick his season on and really prove not only how the daughter's wrong but prove myself wrong because I said we need to ask questions about Gabriel Jesus it would be really really good to see him come back into the team and get his thing and get his season going it's really really something that we're going to we're going to need him if we're going to be challenging for a Premier League title seeing the amount of injuries we already have in this team and potentially more to come through a long ruling season but now that you see the predicted 11 what do you think will be the score to know below who do you think will be the predicted 11 as well as the predicted score of this game for me i'm going with 2-0 arsenal 2-0 because i think arsenal are very 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 defensively stout i think having Partey and Jorginho in front of a good defense a consistent defense and a good team that's in form i think that will continue to take us over the line if we don't give away any mistakes and don't give away anything in midfield i think that is the base of how we will get three points here defense building and getting an, a clean sheet is the starting of it and i think we need to be clinical in the attack and having players like bakayo sako potentially melito as captain this game I, I think it might be a good 
good omen for us. What Bukayo Saka has a really, really good record against Tottenham Hotspur. I think he scored in the last, he definitely scored in the last two games that we played against them, but he has a good record overall against them throughout his Arsenal career. But you guys in the comment section, let me know what you think. Who will um, start for Arsenal? What do you think the score prediction will be? I go with a 2 0 victory. Um, if I had to guess a score, I'd say Bukayo Saka scores. And I'd also go Kai Havertz, Saka and Havertz as the scorers. And yeah, you guys in the comment section, let me know what you think down below. How big is this game? Do you think we will miss Odegaard? Would you start Enwineri from the start? And yeah, without further ado, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. We're on the road to 1,000 subscribers. Leaving a like always helps the channel as well as subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you never miss any of my uploads as well as live streams. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm live streaming on Mondays and Wednesdays. So if you like any live content and you want a more interactive feel with me and getting your questions in and talking to me and rebuttaling with me, ladies and gentlemen, I go live on Mondays and Wednesdays. So if you want any of that content, don't forget to like and subscribe and join the family. But without further ado, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your time. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.